the kingdom and its laws. Friends, I need you to remember that in the last part I dealt with this, this situation where we brought out the meaning of the name of Jesus from Matthew 1.21 where we found out that his name actually meant that he would save his people from their sins. And we defined sin as the transgression of the law, the breaking of this, this law that happens to be there in God's kingdom. So Jesus came to save me and you from breaking the law, right? Now I want you to picture this. Imagine a prisoner who's been in jail for, say, 20 years. And he comes out of prison. And he wants to make sure that he does not go back in that prison. One of the first things that happens is he needs to become a law-abiding citizen, right? Now picture this, God has a people who are called the Israelites who were in captivity. They were basically in prison in Egypt. And then God says, okay, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to bring you from one kingdom into another. And now the amazing thing is God takes them from Egypt. And then before they can actually get into this promised land, he decides to give them his law. And we find this law in Exodus chapter 20. And as I already touched on last time, the reason God gave the law in verse 2, God says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So God says, I'm giving you my law because I have freed you. You know, growing up, I used to think that this law is actually a restriction. But God says, I, have, I am giving it to you because I have set you free. In the first commandment, God says, basically, do not have any other gods before me. The reason for that being simple. Who is the one that keeps you alive? The one that keeps you alive is the one that you give your affections to. So is there anything in your life that you're putting ahead of God? The second commandment, God says, do not bow down to any, do not make any graven images or even bow down to them. Do not even serve them. You know, what's the point in making yourself a little statue or taking something that is created and actually bowing down to it and worshipping it? And what is it that we use to bow down? We use our bodies. So the bowing down could actually be giving my body, giving your body to something other than God. What am I using my body for? And the third commandment, God says, don't take my name in vain. And when we think about it, we take God's name in vain with our mouths, with our words. And words come from our very hearts. So the issue now would be, am I using my mouth for God's glory? Am I speaking words that are bringing life to other people? And more importantly, am I living a life that reflects love, that reflects God? Otherwise, I'm just waging a war on love. I'm taking his name in vain. In the fourth commandment, God simply says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God is saying, I've set aside time for you to spend with me. And God is saying, because I am God, I am your creator, Honor me by coming to spend time with me. Now I want you to think of this. Not many of us even have access, say, to the Queen of England or to, to the President of the United States. But yet the monarch of the universe says, I have set aside time, which will be quality time between me and you on a personal level. And the fifth commandment, God says, Honor your father and your mother. The sixth, God says, do not kill. The seventh, God says, don't commit adultery. And the eighth, God says, do not steal. And the ninth, God says, don't bear false witness. Basically, don't lie. Don't lie against somebody else. And the last one, God simply says, do not covet. Don't, don't be jealous and wanting what somebody else has. He says, don't stoop to that level. Why? Because God is love. Because he wants you, he wants me to actually reflect love. 
So no longer will I steal from you because it would hurt you. This is what love does. It's about the motive, the purity of your motive. Now picture this scenario. A gentleman was driving down the road. He's, he happens to be breaking the speed limit. He's speeding. And the police officer stops him. And the officer says, you know what? I'm going to let you go off this time. Now ask yourself this question. Does that give that person the license to actually speed even more? Or are they going to be careful and, and actually stick to the law? Now Jesus came down and laid down his life for you and for me because we had broken the law. And all he's saying is, I have given you my grace, but my grace is not a license. Just like with the police officer, the grace is not a license to actually then go on and break it even more and continue breaking it. So I ask you the question, whose kingdom does your life reflect? Are you living for God's kingdom? Or are you still in that same old kingdom where lying, cheating, robbing, murder, selfishness still reign supreme? Which one do you want to be in? The choice is yours. You know, a lot of people say, I did not choose to be in this world. And that's true. But you can choose how you go out of this world. The choice is yours. This is Kingdom Living.